Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 335, the Pirate Edition. I'm Kevin Coulson. <laughs> and I'm the Pirate. I'm Gavin Ashington. It's October the 20th. <laughs> Arr. <laughs> Okay, welcome to another program. Gavin is back from retina surgery. Uh, I know a lot of our, our viewers are follow us on Facebook, and last Thursday or Friday I posted, uh-oh, please pray for Gavin. He's been rushed to the hospital to have emergency surgery, and uh, I know people who had retina surgery, and it's not pretty, it's not fun, because the recovery is done horizontally. Um, first, what led to your retina bursting? Do you, mean, do you mean why did it burst or i'm just i'm badly made <laughs> yeah, that's right <laughs> well actually my, my my eyes are both my eyes are both bad, badly out of shape and apparently the more myopic you are the more stress is put on them and the more likely they are to go so it's a it's it's um it happens to poorly sighted people oh jeez. okay so you got the uh, surgery you went home they said lie down uh, some people have to lay down face flat for a week, some people on their side. What did they tell you mm. to do? Um, I had to be on my right-hand side at an angle of 45 degrees, mm. uh, day and night, with 10-minute breaks in the day for uh, for, for you know, eccentric stuff. <laughs> uh, and, and the trouble is the... Um, but that you know that puts a strain on your back and your shoulders and your neck and, and a whole lot of other stuff. But but the um, I, I got through it amazingly. The problem was I'm told that there are two ways of doing the surgery. One with slightly bigger instruments, which increase the effectiveness of the surgery in your eye, but leave quite a wound afterwards. Or smaller ones, which are trickier and leave a smaller wound. Anyway, it looks like I got quite a big wound in the cornea. And the problem was the medicine they gave me, the eye drops, uh, inflamed the wound. So instead of getting better and closing up, this big wound became bigger and and uh, it it did feel like somebody was was uh, pressing a screwdriver into my eye and wiggling it around quite a lot of the day. Oh, well, before we get to the prognosis, I do remember. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess it was six or seven years ago. They they took a tumor out of my head, and I thought I was a man. I thought I could handle it. I was you know a big boy. I was a baby. You just asked Mrs. Anglican TV. I was just miserable. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm wondering, how did you fare? Uh, I think Mrs. Pirate thinks that I ought to be a bit stronger <laughs> than I am. It, actually, it, it left me with a... It wasn't just the pain. I think one of the things I found difficult was that um, uh, as the pain grew, uh, any attempt to pray became in increasingly difficult. Mm. And... And then actually in the end, you know, impossible. I mean, you know, you, you shout out, help, <laughs> stop it, <Yeah. laughs> get me out of this. Um, and it, it just, it made me, made me think about a lot of things about prayer really, but one one of the things that, um, that, that you know, we're like camels crossing a desert. And you, you can't always be sure there's going to be an, an oasis around the corner. You, you need to, we need to travel pretty prayed up <laughs> so that when the, when the bad time comes, we, and we're less likely to, to to run out of things, but but losing a sense of the presence of God and and being um, in anything that comes close to agony, it's it's there, it's it's pretty horrible. And actually, I think one of the things I I think I want to say is, you know, there's a touch of hell about it, and um, I, I think we should be able to say to people, look, you've you've had a touch of heaven, forgiveness, bliss, reconciliation, love, belonging. And you've, you've all had touches of hell, um, despair, serious pain, uh, complete alienation. And um, these are not passing things. These, these, these are ultimate things. And we, you just need to make sure you're not going to end up in hell because it's the most dreadful place. And I, I think we need to find ways of being more explicit about that, although we'll probably talk about that in this program. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple of stories. Oh, what a great that. transition to the Church of England. No, you're good at this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was 
<laughs> if people don't know, oh, here in America, they don't get to see you on the BBC and other programs, but uh, Gavin is an experienced professional uh, at <laughs> being a video person uh, with his voice and uh, um, expressing the true heart of the church. And uh, we, we thank you for that. Um, today, we got to tease you with the eye patch, but a uh, uh, consummate professional. Uh, I do, I do want to take a quick, uh, can you tap your microphone? I want to be sure that's what we're using. Yeah, okay, good. Is that on? Yeah, it's, it's on. Uh, it's a little boxy. Um, and I think uh, I'm going to send you something to put on your walls uh, right around there to, to take care of that. I'll edit this little section out. Okay, our transition to the Church of England. There's a diocese called Hereford. If you look at it, it actually reads Hereford uh, Diocese. And they passed a resolution at their latest synod calling for the House of Bishops to put together a liturgy, so to speak, that would honor those who just had same-sex marriages um, and other types of stuff that's not done yet. And I said, oh, I need to talk to Gavin. Uh, first, where is Hereford Diocese? It's here, Kevin. I'm in it. You're in it. <laughs> I'm, sitting, I'm, in, I'm sitting in Hereford Diocese, and um, uh, I, I've not been able to, to follow much on the internet in the last 10 days, but I began to this morning, and it got quite exciting as I got reports of what had happened in the Diocesan Synod. And of course, people are very distressed indeed, because the Diocesan Bishop, a man called Richard Frith, has long been a supporter of gay marriage and, uh, and LGBT issues. Um, of course, one has to say that these people don't know they're doing wrong. They, they, they believe that they're taking a morally good stance. But I mean, that's, that's the tragedy of, of ethics. You know, even um, uh, everyone always claims that they're, they're, doing, they're doing the right. However, he's been a supporter of it. And the diocese passed this uh, last night. The suffragan bishop, uh, Alistair McGowan, who is the bishop of Ludlow uh, and a neighbor of mine, um, voted against it uh, and stood yeah. up and he referred he referred to the Bible and to our Lord, and a number of people want to commend him for being a faithful bishop. But it's a it's a problem when you have two bishops teaching two different kinds of faith, two different ethical standards, wholly opposed to each other. Uh, and the real problem is that this is the strategy that that Welby has um, promised to oversee and bring in. Oh, hold on, Issa. I Let's back up. I was told, or we were all told by Welby, that after the last synod, nothing's changed. We're not changing our doctrine. We're not changing the prayer book. Look, the 39 articles is the same. So, And you're telling me there's some type of a, a conspiracy going on? No, I'm, I'm saying there are two different kinds of language. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> two things that, that mean the opposite, but both appear to be true. So when, when the archbishop talked uh, in terms of uh, the un the unlimited welcome, the un the unlimited uh, affirmation, uh, the in the boundless inclusion of LGBT uh, people and issues into the church. Um, he wasn't talking about uh, the love of Christ that applies to everybody, irrespective of their sin or their holiness or their journey, because that's a truism. That's always been the case. He was talking about making a special case for LGBT culture within the church. Now, whilst saying they're not going to change the official doctrine of the Church of England, and they're not, apart from anything else, we're very cumbersome, and it will take a very long time. So they don't need to do that. Uh, they can get, go, they can get to the same uh, goal much more quickly and simply by changing the practice of the Church of England. Michael Nazir Ali many times has said, the doctrine of the church is effectively the prayer of the church. Of course it is. How you pray is how you love. Uh, and, and, you know, when you pray to Christ in your heart, you pray to a real person you know and understand. You you pray to reality, and, and your prayers are, of course, one of the most real things about you. So the idea that you can change the prayers of a church and you're not touching doctrine is a is a three card trick. It's a piece of deception, and it's really unworthy of a, of a public figure to to pretend otherwise. But that's what they're pretending, and these diocesan uh, these diocesan votes are intended to change doctrine by changing prayer and to change practice in the end now a lot of times uh here in america it's usually the most liberal diocese to go first you know over in los angeles or uh, san diego <clears throat> new jersey 
um, boom, they're, they're willing to take the first step uh, or send somebody to take the first step uh, down the liberal road. Um, is Hereford Diocese known as a liberal diocese? It used to be quite a conservative diocese. It's a, it's a rural diocese. It's in, um, uh, it's a, it runs alongside uh, the border of Wales uh, in the middle of England. Um, no, not, not hugely liberal, but the fact is, um, and I have to say that, that, that with increasingly with, with women clergy, one of the things that women clergy have done in the Church of England is increase those who hold a relativistic and a pluralistic theology. Um, so, you know, we've had a number of surveys which have said that. So this, this liberalism is uh, like an incoming tide. Uh, and it's it's exacerbated by the growing numbers of uh, of women, not all of whom are liberal, of course not. But they've been raised on a diet of egalitarian feminism and relativism, and so the uh, this this particular change in the culture of of ethics in the church comes naturally to many of them. So it's like a slow tide coming in, and I don't think we are well enough organised to say that the most liberal diocese will always go first. But but certainly, um, so you know, this is one of one of the first dominoes to go down. There'll be lots to follow. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I've been watching some stuff lately in, in the Roman Catholic Church you know, coming out of uh, Rome, and I'm left scratching my head. You know, it, n nothing is sacred and nothing is safe. Um, moving on to our next well, time. It's, it's, yeah, go on. It, well, I'm just going to say that, I mean, it, it's the spirit of the age. Yes, this is, is. So, you know, although I've suggested there are some gender reasons why it might be uh, accelerated, the fact is, this is not the fault of either of any gender. This is the spirit. It's a it's a spiritual disease which mm -hmm. um, is um, changing people's understanding of the world they live in and and of Christian anthropology. And it will affect all the churches. Um, some churches, like some dioceses, will fall quickly more quickly than others because they were built on sand. Others will take much longer. But but you're right. Uh, the Roman Catholics. We'll be struggling with the same anthropological and theological and spiritual issues that everyone else is. Yeah, and that's a strange thing. I, we've always seen throughout uh, history, uh, church history, a church has always tilted and, and slowly gone liberal or left. I've never seen mm -hmm. a church, um, except for the Reformation, uh, where they said we're going to, in the Oxford movement, uh, we're going to, you know, stop what we're doing and retake, reclaim the ground we lost. No, I think you've put your finger on it because mm. <clears throat> the answer to your question is to, to when does that happen? Mm. Uh, is is it happens when repentance happens? I remember being at GAFCON 2000 and uh, was it 13 mm -hmm. uh, in Nairobi, and we had an African bishop stand up and said, you know, guys, you'll you'll want to be praying for another East African revival. Well, let me tell you how it happens. It happens when you repent. The Holy Spirit and revival come. Uh, in direct proportion to your repentance. And if you look at Wesley uh, and that, that great movement of renewal in this country, the same thing is true. It begins with people getting a greater sense of sin and falling to their knees and asking for forgiveness and being willing to change. So the church has been renewed uh, throughout its history, but it's, it's, it comes in terms of repentance. And I think one of the things that's really quite frightening about the church today is there is a sense of pride with which it embraces these heterodox issues, it, it, it's as if it's 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 pleased to do so. It's 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 full of itself. <laughs> it is. And no it, sense. It, it, when there's repentance, they repent for not doing it sooner. Yes. Uh, yes. It's uh, I just want to drive me crazy. Okay, uh, we didn't talk about our donations to uh, Anglican TV or Anglican Scripted. We want you to donate likes. I know it's hard. It's a, it's a burden upon you. We know our audience is largely clergy and you don't have a big income. So if you could just, if you have free time, click the like button on the video in front of you, whether it's on YouTube, Facebook. Uh, also, if you could donate shares, that would be very helpful to us. We want to grow our audience, which is, you know, okay, we already have the largest Anglican audience for any video show out there. That's cool, but we could be bigger. There's more people out there. Um, on to some more news. Let's finish up with. What, what okay, let's back read. up, <laughs> and I'm going to edit this section. <laughs> well, uh, what, what, you, what you have actually heard about yes. is a is a, a Christian a mission agency being being thrown out of helping school Christian education. So, so it's it's a it's a 
a charity that helps that a, cha a Christian charity that helps teach the faith in schools. Ah. They've been kicked out of school. That's what I heard. That's what you heard. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the story? Why why are uh, Christian uh, charities being kicked out of your schools? Uh, in Tunbridge Wells, in southeast England, they're very lucky. They have this Christian charity called Cross Teach. And for 16 years, it's been full of uh, young kids, uh, you know, uh, uh, young adults, who've enthusiastically gone into schools and they've done assemblies, they've danced, they've sung, they've, they've um, done presentations, they've, they've gone into classes and helped teachers uh, teach RE because we don't have uh, very well qualified RE teachers in this country. They've been imaginative and kind and they've always been in every situation accompanied by a teacher, of course, uh, and hugely helpful to, in this case, a Church of England primary school in Tunbridge Wells called St. John's. Well, some, some secular parents, despite the fact they've chosen and asked to send their children to a Church of England school uh, where Christian Church of England ethos is big on the uh, self-advertisement. Well, they hold on a second. They clearly sent their child there to a Christian school sponsored by, obviously, the Church of England, knowing that there was no danger of them hearing anything about Jesus Christ or the gospel. Well, I think that's the trouble. They, they thought that. And then, then when their children got entertained and got the gospel brought to them, the children, some of these parents got very cross and they started a campaign to get rid of cross teach uh, from the school. They accused the young people who helped uh, and who've been doing this for 16 years of extremism and hate speech. Apparently, one of the parents looked up the tweets of one of the helpers and discovered that uh, he had quoted from a poem about, by a hymn writer called Isaac Watts and was quoting about blood, <laughs> the blood of Jesus. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and as I was talking earlier on about the reality of heaven and hell, anyway, they found this so offensive that they started a campaign to get these, uh, this, this mission agency thrown out of the school. Now, the headmaster uh, looked at their complaints and he said, I want it to be very clear, made very clear that this mission agency, Cross Teach, has done nothing wrong. There is no extremism. There is no hate. There never has been any misbehavior, but they're banned from my school. <laughs> and then, of course, everyone expected the diocese because it's a church school. The diocese might stand up and say to the headmaster, well, we think your duty lies elsewhere. What the diocese actually did was to thank these aggressively secular parents for drawing them out of their attention and cross teach remain banned from the school. Many of the local clergy have, have protested, but effectively this, this head teacher uh, wants a quiet life rather than uh, wanting to defend what is true, what is good, what is wholesome, and what is helpful. Um, but, but by these many acts of cowardice, does a whole culture fall? And, and it's just another, it's just another um, cut in the rope that has held us together in Christendom. It's, it's really, it's really very tragic. And what diocese is this again? That this, uh, this will be the diocese of, I'm pretty sure it's the diocese of Rochester, okay. but I hope that some of oh, anyone knows better there. Might... That was Nazarelli's place. It was, it was Nazarelli's place. <sighs> well, things are changing fast. You're depressing me. That's Friday. I'll have a good weekend. Uh, any plans for this weekend, Gavin? Uh, not hurting. <laughs> <laughs> not lying down. <laughs> not, not blinking. Down, not uh, but beginning to be able. I, I I tried to write an article about the about the uh, school, and I, I got to my my um, laptop at midday, and I wrote four sentences, and then was overcome by nausea and exhaustion. Uh, it's hard <laughs> so, because your eyes have you know largely been in in a darkened area for. Uh, the week and not operating functionally. I'm assuming this is your dominant eye as well, right? The covered eye? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, there was a good eye that went, yes. Of course. <laughs> of course. Why not? <laughs> so, yeah, you're going to have vertigo uh, a little bit and you're going to have trouble reading. Yeah. But, 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 but yeah. praise the Lord. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. Oh, can I, can I, Kevin, can I say especially? Absolutely. Um, I, I, haven't been a, I haven't been able to, to get on the internet very much, uh, but I have been able to see that a whole load of people have sent me good wishes and promise that they're praying for me. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I'm just so incredibly grateful. Uh, here I am, 10 days later, I'm, I'm on the way to getting better. I'm more or less in my right mind, or past this in my right mind. And that didn't seem like a guarantee all the way through. So <laughs> There's I, limitations I, I, to <laughs> prayer, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> just, 
<laughs> you've just hit some. So I just want to say how, how grateful I am for those of you who've prayed for me. Uh, and, and, you know, it's wonderful. Thank you. Well, we also want to say it worked. You know, yes. Uh, praise yeah. God. Uh, his prayers were answered. Uh, the faithful prayed, and uh, Gavin is on a road to full recovery. We did talk about the prognosis. What did this say is going to be the long-term uh, health of your eye? Oh, well, if, as long as you don't sneeze or bang your head or anything goes goes wrong, yes. um, then this is quite a good operation. With a, with a, a the, the, the critical period is the first 10 days, which is why you lie at this awful angle, because they, they, they freeze it. They don't sew it on. They freeze it in place. And then they put a gas bubble that holds it there so that for 10 days, the healing process begins to knit it. So it's a bit precarious. But if you don't bang your head against a wall on purpose or by accident, <laughs> you're, you're, the prognosis is greatly improved. <laughs> All right. Well, go find your pirate ship, Gavin. I'm Kevin Carlson. Aha, my heart is. I'm Gavin Ashenden. It's been episode 335. God bless you all.